I went, this is the future. If kids can own or if gamers could own their in-game items and be able to um, sell them or trade them when they finish the game or mm -hmm. take them into another game in this interoperability part, then this, this, is, um, this could be massive. So we literally doubled down on blockchain games and NFTs mm -hmm. back in 2017. And now um, we're a top 20 worldwide blockchain games developer. Um, we work with um, some pretty big brands. So we work exclusively at the moment with the BBC and we're doing a Doctor Who trading card game where every card is a, is a unique NFT. Um, we are working with ITV um, and we're doing a Thunderbirds generative art drop. So think Board Ape Yacht Club, but they're, they're classic Thunderbird characters. And, um, and we have a, a huge roadmap of very exciting IP coming out, which are all integrated with the blockchain and NFTs. And that, that's just one, one um, part of what we do. We also, we've also expanded the business into um, creating storefronts where companies can license our technology, our platform and sell their own NFTs. We have our own marketplace where users can trade them. We have our own side chain. So we have a side chain that's built off the Ethereum mainnet. It's a fork off the Ethereum blockchain, um, which mints all of our NFTs. So there's no gas fees to the users. It, the, there's no um, issues around sustainability and energy. And, um, and, and that whole platform runs the Doctor Who game, which is out now. Um, and um, then we do NFT drops with celebrities. Um, we've just recently done the Floyd Mayweather boxer drop. So we've created all his NFTs, videos, and, and in still images, and um, did the tokenomics, the smart contracts. And actually we use Rarible as the, sec as the marketplace for that. So we don't, although we build marketplaces, you know, we are still, um, if, if, the, if the project fits, we will go to OpenSea or Rarible and, and use those as well. So we, we are kind of NFT as a service <laughs> and do, do many different things, but um, I suppose games is still the big focus. Yeah, and obviously, as you mentioned, kind of the athletic side of things as well, that that's becoming quite big for, you know, people that would be uh, big sports stars, big kind of celebrities um, yeah. to start to produce their own. It's super interesting, man. And how do you think in terms of the NFT industry, you know, do you think this is just the start? Are we at the tip of the iceberg? And where do you see it going, particularly for games? Because I know that's like the big kind of, the big place really, as you've pointed out, that in-game assets is like you know, a whole new market pretty yeah. much. We're, we're our, this market has just started, but what's, mm. what's fascinating is that going back to my background of traditional games, I've kind of always been at the front of the platform. So I was there right at the beginning of console. I was there right at the beginning of mobile gaming. Mm. I was there right at the beginning of, of social gaming on Facebook. And, and I've seen mm. these hockey stick curves. NFT gaming wasn't a hockey stick. It was flat and then just went straight up. <laughs> it, it went, you know, two years ago, it was a $350 million business. Last year, it was a $40 billion business. I mean, it's, it's, I've never seen a, a market grow or move so fast. And yet that $40 billion of NFT trading, that value is still a tiny fraction of mm. the potential market. So the upside to this, you know, in, in five years, 10 years time, is going to be incredible. In fact, I, I actually think everything will be tokenized in the next 10 years, not just gaming assets, everything. Yeah. Um, so, mm. you know, and look at, if you look at traditional games, you know, 90, $90 billion last year was the games revenue for mobile games only, right? And yet 99% of mobile games are free to play, right? So, so, mm. how do you, so if they're free games, how do you generate that money. kind of revenue? And, and the way they do that is because the, the game is free to download and then they sell you in-game items, right? And that there's the, the, the companies that make a lot of money out of this are, are extremely good at the point of which they offer you that item to either upgrade your sword or your gun or upgrade a level. There's a, there's a particular skill in creating good free to play games, but you might be spending, you know, hundreds of dollars a month in these games, but you, you actually own nothing, right? So, so this is, you know, if, if the games company went bust, you'd lose all of your stuff because the, the in-game item that you bought 
is logged on a centralized database in the in by the games publisher right? you're mm. locked in you can't take it out you're locked into the game and and that that's always been I, i've always found that kind of weird that people would spend a lot of money on in-game items when when actually you own nothing and and i think what i go back to what the game changer and the and the light bulb moment was the blockchain because now every item is is logged on a decentralized database the blockchain it's not logged on the games database so if if the mm -hmm. games company went bust i've still got the sword that still i bought there. from that game in my wallet now there might be another game that comes out that i can use that sword in right so so it's your item to do what you want with and, and i think um you know we are we're we are starting to see some really good quality games come through you know axie infinity was the first real game that um really jumped on the play to earn side and i think play to earn mm. and farming staking and governance tokens for games i think is a really really good thing because it gets the community the games players really involved in the game and um and you know axie infinity you know broke many boundaries and now there's lots of games trying to do the same thing the one thing there isn't in blockchain games so far is a major license you know, a major triple a games company like ea or activision coming through with a well-known yeah. gaming brand that is, that is attached to the blockchain it will happen but in the meantime mm. companies like us are bringing in very well-known licenses, Doctor Who, as an example, and um, creating really, really beautiful games um, around well-known licenses. And, and the Doctor Who game, you know, we the, the game comes out in October 2022, so later this year, but we've been selling the cards um, for the last six months. So you can buy you can buy the tradable cards now from our website, mm -hmm. it's Doctor Who Dash Worlds Apart. When you buy you buy them in packs and when you open the pack up it's a blind pack so you buy them and, and out come the cards so you're either going to go yes i've got mm -hmm. a really rare one or oh that's not so mm -hmm. good and as soon as they come out they've been minted on our side chain and um since we launched that we've now um tokenized over one and a half million cards and the game doesn't come out for another six months um, mm -hmm. People are buying them. They're, they're buying them for three reasons. They're either massive Doctor Who fans that just love buying these these really cool cards, or they're buying them to trade. That hope speculate, hope they get a really cool one. And you know, we're seeing we're seeing hundreds of thousands of these cards being traded at the moment. Um, or they're mm -hmm. buying them because they're they're creating their decks ready for when the game comes out. And when the game comes out, they've got this great deck of cards, and they've either got the decks through buying these packs or they're trading them now in our marketplace so so I, you know it's, i think we've got one of the one of the, the i think we've got a smash hit because it's a it's a great fun game and it's a trading card game and you own the cards yeah no no but what, mm. it couldn't fit better yeah uh yeah so so mm. so anyway uh, back to your question i think we're on that it hasn't even properly started this market yeah. will be hundreds of billions it's incredible, I suppose. And there's such a revolution in the games market that's now like, what, three times the size of the movie industry or something. Uh, it's going to be, it seems to be the kind of 21st century entertainment market, pretty much. Um, but on the topic of big games companies coming in, do you think that there's then a conflict with, say, like if you had EA or Activision or something with them putting their stuff on a blockchain because they want maybe people to stay within their game world like how important is that interoperability and the kind of the the connectedness that comes from sharing a blockchain i suppose there's there's almost like a communal aspect to it maybe that with companies competing with each other do you think there's there will be a conflict there yeah. i i think the eas the epics that take fortnite as example of this world mm. um very nervous of blockchain and what it offers their gamers. The last thing they probably want in, if you're playing Fortnite is for people to buy something within Fortnite and take it out and sell it because there becomes a secondary market. You know, last year, mm. um, Fortnite, the, it, that's a free to play game. It made $4 billion selling in-game items, right? They want, they want to yeah. lock you in, right? I, I think they will, they will look at the, the, that at this blockchain gaming market and 
and be pretty concerned, right? But what's going to happen mm. is there's going to be another Fortnite come out, a similar game, where the players that have spent that $4 billion now own those items and they can make their money back. And guess where the player's going to go? They're not going to go there. They're going to go to this game. So I think I think the the, the gamers will force the hand of the big games mm. companies to change the way that they they create their games. Um, otherwise, mm. yeah, they're very happy where they are. Why do they want to change a market that makes them <laughs> a lot of money? Well, the market the market is yeah. changing. Blockchain has changed it, and it's independent mm. companies like us that are now starting to see you know hundreds of thousands of players come to our games. Um, and it will be millions of players quite soon that are now going, this is much better. I'm, you know, I'm, I can spend my money and own these items. And, and, you know, in the future, I can take it into another game and, and hey, this is cool. Mm -hmm. So it will mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. It, it's not going to be this year. It's not going to be next year, but, but it will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it seems like a kind of obvious evolution, I suppose, if people can actually own the stuff that they're playing with, that that's what they're going to want to do. Um, but in yeah. terms of for the global DeFi, or sorry, the global NFT conference that we have coming up now, twenty uh, second of July, which is going to be in person in London, the biggest NFT event in London ever, and then we'll have the twenty eighth of July is going to be the online edition. Um, what is it that you'll be speaking about at the conference, Tony? And what message would you like to give people? about NFTs? So we are going to be showing real life case studies. And I think one of the things with um, uh, being in this space, it's still very new. You know, this market, you know, we, we founded this company in 2017. We're, we were a pioneer, still are, but we've been around since, since it started. There's lots of companies now appearing everywhere. And you go and, you know, they go, we do NFTs and we do games. We go, okay, show me. And they go, oh no, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> So yeah. what I want to do at the show is show your audience two real case studies. One of them is with the BBC and it's Doctor Who. How did we do this? How did we come about it? How was the game developed? What are the NFTs for? How do the users buy an NFT? How was it minted? Where do they sell it? And all just a real case study. Show the product. And then I want to show... Um, uh, the Thunderbirds generative art drop. Now that's very different to Doctor Who because Doctor Who is a is a trading card game, right? Thunderbirds sure. is a generative art drop like Board Ape Yacht Club. So with Board Apes, when you bought the ten thousand apes, um, went by owning that Board Ape gave you access to a roadmap of things. You know, and that, that's why the value's so high on those because um, it, it's like a VIP membership into um, into into yep. areas or things that you can only get if you own one of these. It'll be the same with the Thunderbirds. So Thunderbirds characters from the classic TV series, um, your, you, you choose your character, it mints that into, um, into, into an NFT. And then with that NFT, we've got a two-year roadmap, a couple of three-year roadmap of things that you can do with that NFT, including taking it into a metaverse, turning yourself into the character of that, of the Thunderbird character, walking around as your avatar. Um, so I, I want to, I want to talk about that as well, because they're, they're, they're two very different things. And the Thunderbirds um, NFT generative art drop actually happens just after your event. So I think it's, it's really good timing and, and people can see what we're doing. Amazing. Two massive case studies. Like people would be there. It'd be worth going just for those alone. I'm sure if anybody's involved in blockchain games and NFTs, because that's like knowledge you couldn't pay for really. Thank you so much, Tony. And I really look forward to hearing that at the conference. Yeah, great. Thanks.